welcome to That Guy's a Maniac, the podcast. You can find us talking drivel and shite for the past 15 <laughs> years on www.thatguys.co.uk. And more recently, we have been putting out podcasts. And yeah, so you can hear our shite as well as read our shite. <laughs> Today we have me, Richie, and as ever, my heterosexual life mate, Farlsberg. Hello. <laughs> um, who are we sponsored by today? This uh, week's episode of the podcast is sponsored by Nookway, your one-stop shop for shovels and hedges and furniture and wallpaper. What sort of currency do they take there? <laughs> Bells. <laughs> Bells. Okay. <laughs> cool. So for... not the dingly danglies. <laughs> Just a currency called Bells. Okay. That's not confusing in any fashion. Brilliant. I know. <laughs> cool. I wonder how you No. No, I'm not gonna say that. Why are you not gonna say that? Ah, uh, it's like what if you want to buy a bell? What if does Nookway <laughs> sell bells? I'm sure. How many do. bells for a bell? I guarantee they do. Like, there'll be some sort of, like, I don't know, Japanese ceremonial bell that you can buy. To make yeah, your... I was thinking, but I can't think of any bells that they sell. If you play Animal Crossing, any of them, and you've come across Tom Nook or the other two selling bells, write in. Oh, we don't have an address you can write into, but just write in and let us know. Yeah, yeah, we do. I, like every single one of these podcasts has got like uh, a comment section. We've got um, Richie at that guy's dot go to UK. Yeah, okay. write in. Nobody's going to write in. You do realize this? Because I know, I know. Uh, this is just fixable with a Google. Yeah, Tom Nook we, Bell. We have more episodes than we do people who've listened to us. <laughs> it's true. It's so true. yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But enough self So what is this what is the general format for this audio blast, Richie? Well, this general oh sorry, this audio blast is quite simply a continuation of our What Are You Playing? Which is the games that we've played recently. Um and... Are we gonna are we gonna finally do the merchant voice? Oh I'm not gonna do it. I mean like I'm gonna I... I'm gonna try. I'm gonna okay. give it a try. Oh, I feel super self-conscious. <laughs> you should. <clears throat> what are you... Oh, I was going to say what you're buying. That was really good then. <laughs> what are you playing? No, horrible. Horrible. Mm. It's okay. I promise you I'll edit it out. Um, okay. <laughs> and I won't remix it into a dance track in any fashion. <laughs> you have promised to give yours at some point. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe next week. Maybe next week. <laughs> maybe next week. Although I think maybe we'll just finish it today, and there's no need for it anymore. Is this is this the final podcast? Yeah, final podcast. <laughs> okay, it's been a good run. Uh, yeah, it has been. Yeah, um, <laughs> and we're just never going to play any more games again. So no need. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> so, without further ado, <laughs> what are you playing? What am I playing? So, uh, I have been playing, to a certain degree, the new Streets of Rage 4. Oh, hot off the press. Although, they did come out like two or three weeks ago. And they did, the the by the time this podcast comes out, it'll have been out a month ago. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, still, compared to the games that normally come up, yeah, true. it's quite contemporary. So, uh, quickly give me your history with the Streets of Rage series. Um, I once went away um, in, ooh, in the early 90s with one of my friends from school. And we went to a holiday camp. Now, these are like straight up proper holiday camps, like Butlins. Was it like a Butlins or a, what was the other yeah. one? Uh, it was Haven actually haven there we go yeah so we, we went on a haven holiday and the like it was really really cool because they had an arcade 
Um, and that's where I actually fell in love with um, Darkstalkers. Played it to death. Uh, but they also had a competition night. Now, admittedly, I think what was happening there was the kids were just being sort of put in a corner so the parents could go and, like, drink and swing or whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, there was a competition uh, on the Mega Drive for Streets of Rage. And, oh God, it's the one with the kid on roller skates. That's Streets of Rage 3. Streets of Rage 2, yeah. Streets of Rage 2. Um, and we played that, and I'm going to say I won. I have real, no real recollection, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say I won. Um, I don't, I don't once know it, how... Once again, I once again, Richie comes out swinging with his big balls. So, basically, <laughs> but... you are regional Streets of Rage 2 champion but at this point. Yeah, regional Streets of Rage champion. I don't know how yeah. you won it. Like, obviously, there was a competition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I have no idea how this was arranged, but I'm pretty sure I won it. Um, and, yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you played it through the f- longest? I don't I understand have... how you'd have a competitive Streets of Rage 2, but I'm never mind. Sure there's, there's a score and a high, bo- high, high boat? What's the word I'm looking for? High... A high score. High score, yeah. So I think mean, you can. But in a tournament format, that would involve hours of watching people play Streets of Rage two. Well, not if you're like limited to a life or something like that. Oh, this 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 story <laughs> is sounding less and less uh, like it <laughs> happens as you go. Anyway, <laughs> also, so there's a Mega Drive in an arcade. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, this is what I'm saying. It's like they, they have these, they had the arcade and they had like a few right. machines, uh, but they also yeah. had a competition um, for the kids there. Uh, and right. when I was with the Mega tight, Drive, yeah, with the Mega Drive, and there was a competition. <laughs> that's all I remember. Uh, but yeah, okay. that's when I first played Streets of Rage. Um, yeah. But then I, I'd also played it several times at a friend's house and things like that. So I quite like the Streets of Rage um, format. I actually really, really like. Those side scrolling beat em ups an awful lot, but I've never really. Yeah, me too. But they disappeared uh, off the face of the planet yeah, for a they, long time. They were brutally hard as well. So, um, from my side of things, the Streets of Rage, we had a Mega Drive. So, before we were an Nintendo family, after the Amiga, we were a Sega family. Um, and so, yeah, Golden Axe and Streets of Rage were for a long time kind of our go-to games um and you know i think uh with streets of rage 2 we probably hit the credits a couple of times but with golden axe 2 and golden axe maybe once or twice at best golden axe was um, definitely harder i mean you know you just until you get it down you just lose hundreds of lives on those awkward jumps especially in the amiga like jumping with the joysticks so painful yeah uh and then uh, didn't really touch the first streets of rage um haven't touched streets of rage 3 at all you uh yes i've definitely played it um i in fact um a couple of christmases ago i was gifted a one of these um mega drive little mini mega drives i'm I'm sure they're not official in any fashion but it actually has a slot for you to put in your old Mega Drive games as well, but it comes with oh, wow. 50 plus Mega Drive games already pre-installed on it. Again, I'm sure it's not legit in any fashion. Um, no, the, the I think the official one has what, 20 games? and doesn't even have Sonic 2? Something stupid like that. Oh my god. Okay. Well, in, in any case, yeah, um, and I, I just sat and I played through that one. The annoying thing with that one is, um, well, that uh, device was it was an uh, infrared uh, control pad. So mm. uh, if you tilt upwards in any fashion, I you're not pointing <laughs> the thing at the um, actual uh, device. You, you you your buttons just don't count. So you have to mm. sort of hold it flat at it. But it, it's fine. I mean, um, I played through Streets of Rage one, two, and three, and I didn't. I, I got reasonably far in Golden Max, but <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. 
<laughs> and I didn't lose a single life. No. Just to continue <laughs> yeah, yeah. your... Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> belly big balls. <laughs> Doesn't mean you need <laughs> lives, you know? <laughs> right, one, two, and three continuously without even losing, dropping a life. Yeah, exactly. Uh, belly big balls. Hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, but yeah, it, like, I, I have played through a few of them on... But I, as well as that, I, I really like those side-scrolling beat-em-ups. Even some of the new ones that have come out as well. Or I say new, like, you know, past 10 years. Because um, in Steam, they've actually got a few um, that are fun in that sort of fashion as well. Um, I forget what it's called. Oh, shit. It's like Streets of Rage EX or something like that. The French one. You watch the Let's Play of it. Not talking to me. Uh, gone all silent. Great. I'm here. Hey. You're back. The dishwasher? You're a dishwasher? Did you play dishwasher? Streets of Rage EX? Or I can't remember. Uh, what is it? What's the name of that one? The French one? You no watched idea. a Let's Play of it. Came out a few years ago, right? Yeah. God damn it. Right, I will, I, I'll look into that. Um, but yeah. Um, also, Fighting Rage, which is a really, really uh -huh. cool um, sort of mutant animal fighting game where you play as like um, sort of like pixelated versions of like classic Streets of Rage trope, so you've got a woman in a red dress, with a her opening scene is a very very dodgy looking pixel crotch shot um, you can play as a, a big bull thing, and uh, like an old techy gadgety guy um, you know, like Streets of Rage um, Did you play um, is it Dragon's Crown? No Okay um, That's very similar um, and it has that very strange art style. And then the other one I was thinking of, uh, Castle Crashes, is it? Yeah, Castle Crashes. I like Castle Crashes a lot. That was a good one. Um, I the replay factor on it. I mean, in theory, it should have been like super, super replayable. But like once you've done it once, you kind of give up on it. Which is a real shame uh, because they had so many, like, um, hidden, uh, what's it called? Hidden bits and pieces. Um, which was, uh, I, I don't know. Um, I, I just kind of wish um, Castle Crashers had more um, replayability. Because, like, I never played as any of the extra characters. Like, you go through, you level up one of the one of the knights, the poison knight, the fire knight, whatever, then you're expected to go back again and play as, like, one character that you've unlocked. And then, like, oh, right, okay, now I need to go back through and replay everything with a lower stack character. And I was just like, I'm done. Done with this. No yeah. more. Uh, but, again, it was, it was fun, actually. They've got a block mechanic, um, which was something that's very missing from a lot of side-scrolling beat-em-ups. Um, and yeah, they sort of added magic in um, rather than having a police car turn up and a guy just fire bazookas into the middle of the air that somehow <laughs> lands above you. <laughs> so, how is Streets of Rage 4? Streets of Rage I'd, 4 um, yeah. is pretty. And exactly what you expect from it. So um, that art style is is annoying some people. What the the comic book art style? Yeah, it's not Streets of Rage. Well, yeah, it's also not 1992. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I I think that's stupid. It's absolutely fine. Um, if you're going to update a game, update it with the times. It's perfectly fine. Um, you also have the option to like unlock pixelated versions of the characters as well. 
Um, but yeah, no, like, uh, what are they going to do? Go back and actually make it like a pixel version? Yeah, uh, I that's all I, nah. that's all I saw. I saw the trailer and I was like, oh, that looks kind of cool. And Just then the next time scroll you hear... down. Yeah, if you have anybody you know face to face, just shut them right down. Just like, no. Shut the fuck up. Go away. Get out of my life. I don't need you in my life anymore. <laughs> like, that is. What they did with that was the best way to recreate that because it looks really pretty. It looks nice in 4K. And it's got all of the original characters, like the stupid like guy in the yellow coat with the purple hair. You know, like, you get to see them. But you see them see them so I, I, yeah I, I i didn't even question the fact that there was a different art style well of course there's a different art style like it's it's fine yeah it's a nice uh, just uh, just again just from the trailer you know he's like, oh there's that guy again there's that guy again um that's cool what's the what's the story oh it's <laughs> Do you remember the name of the bad guy in Streets of Rage? No. It was Mr. X. Oh, who was it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um... Oh, is his... he the, the big guy in the suit? Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. His kids, I think he has twins, and so you've got Mr. Y and Mrs. Z or something like that. Oh, Christ, um, okay. It's paper thin, the plot. Who the fuck cares about yeah. the plot? You know, it is... These things happen for some reason. Everybody's back, um, and uh, you have like you got some new characters in there. Do you remember again? Um, the old guy that was also an android <laughs> from no? from Streets of Rage. Streets of Rage three, I think. Oh no, I oh, know I didn't touch that. Uh, might might not be Jen. I I, I think it is though. Uh, his kids in it, and he's basically Jax um, from Mortal Kombat. Oh, yeah. He's got big metal arms, um, and he's got like a, a kamehameha beam thing across the uh, screen. Adam Hunter's daughter, Cherry Hunter, which I don't know. I feel like that sounds like a porn title, you know? <laughs> <It does. laughs> uh... Cherry Buster, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Cherry Hunter is in it, and um, she plays the guitar, so all of her uh, moves are guitar themed. So there'll be like a screech, and she'll skid across the, the floor. Um, but uh, the staples, Axe and Blaze, are back. Uh, uh, Axe? Axel and Blaze. Axe. Axe. Axe and Blazel. <laughs> Axe and Blazel. Um, Axel and Blaze are back. Um, they feel exactly the same, except Axel, for some reason, has a beard now. Um, I think it's to um, signify the passage of time. Oh, okay. Right. Well, then he got older and fatter, um, as men do. <laughs> does he have like a does he have like a paunch with some love handles? <laughs> he's got. He's definitely got a paunch. He's just. He's more barrel like. He is um every every two every two levels yes I have to sit down. Yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah. Yeah so that's uh yeah, they're back and they play pretty much the same way. Um and well Blaze seems to have this weird mystical special move. So she doesn't call in the cops anymore and have a bazooka. She sort of her hair flies out and she floats and some weird sort of pattern appears around her and that hits the enemies. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh wow. But she got is... into the uh she got into the witchcraft. Yeah, I think maybe it was menopause brought it on or something like that, you know? Okay. Passage of time. So she's tapping into her menopause powers. <laughs> yep. So it's like the power of hot and cold flashes. Um <laughs> whereas whereas Axe is just fat and slow. Axe <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so I'm... skating it is Max back. Uh, I have only unlocked Adam Hunter at this point, ah. but um, I believe almost all the characters are back, and of course you've got skins for them and things like that. Um, so that there is a level of replayability. I, I'm 
happy to give it a go. I'm, I'm actually just taking my time and picking it up every so often. Uh, get to play it with my arcade stick as well, which is good fun. Nice. Um, but it's uh, it's it's good. It is exactly what you expected. It is um, nothing more and nothing less than what you would want to have delivered in a Streets of Rage 4 game, I would say. Wow. It's um, high praise. What would you give it out of 10? Well, uh, it's not high praise. I, I would say I would say it's a solid 8 out of 10. What I'm saying is it is just... I think it's everything you could want in a Streets of Rage 4 game. But it, yeah. it doesn't go beyond that. It, it doesn't try to push any boundaries or anything uh, in that sort of fashion. Um, and sometimes that's just what you need. Exactly. You don't necessarily need to have Tekken 7, which is like a bowling mode and things like that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, you know, daily login bonus. Exactly. That's Three currencies. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Very and good accompanying point mobile app where you can compare high schools with your friends <laughs> yeah or like uploaded uh high scoreboards for how fast you can beat it in 1982 um against some kids and um, one life <laughs> a holiday park <laughs> in an arcade which had a mega drive <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah uh, yeah so I think uh, a solid 8 out of 10. Um, it is, if you like Streets of Rage in any way, I don't see you not liking this. Apart from your comment about the fucking, what was it called? The, the art style, which I actually hadn't seen about, but I think it's so ridiculous that anybody would bring that up. So yeah, yeah, some people weren't happy. What are you playing? What am I playing? <laughs> well, um... I'm in a difficult spot with my Switch. So I've got quite a big SD card. Um, but it's now getting to the point <laughs> Billy where... Billy Big Balls. <laughs> Look at me swinging my SD card. That yeah, I but it's not, it's, not, it's not mega big, right? But it's, it's <laughs> bigger than... It's bigger than average. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and it used to just get the job done. But now... Um, uh, the memory card's starting to fill up, so it's been part of the motivation for my um, kind of getting through the backlog during lockdown is to try and clear some space um, because there are a couple of things on the horizon coming. So, for example, the Pokemon expansions are coming, which are going to eat up some space. Um, so I blasted through uh, the LEGO DC game, which was a 10 gig download, which is insane, um, and it had some free space. And then stupidly, I was like, oh, I wonder if there's any um, free-to-play stuff on the eShop uh, <laughs> to just fill the time. So I ended up downloading... SD card, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I ended up downloading Blades, which is the uh, Elder Scrolls free-to-play, oh, which has just yeah. come out on the Switch. Has it just come out everywhere? I don't know, because I spoke to you about it. And uh, you yeah, like, no. It was uh, it came out about a year ago on mobile devices. Um, uh, okay. And like there was talk of it on, on the Switch, but yeah, I played it. Um, I I think it like pre thingied for it, like uh, early access, um, and went through it. But yeah, sorry. So you've been playing yeah, so Blades. We've been playing Blades, and I <laughs> I don't know. I played quite a few free-to-play games on the Switch, <clears throat> um, and as we've mentioned before, there is a, obviously a rhythm to them, right? So there was uh, Fallout Shelter, which was quite good but very passive. Um, Pokemon Quest, which I've put silly numbers of hours into. I think I up to over a hundred hours on that, which is awful. It's an awful game. It's not even. Yeah, it game. is. It's really, really. It's not like I. Again, I played that um, on the mobile rather than on, on the Switch. And yeah. I stopped. I actually gave up and said, I cannot spend any more time on this. And you were like, yeah, I hate it. And then like a week later, I'm collecting this, I'm collecting this. You just like, you, 
I feel like you shouldn't be exposed to free-to-play games because of your completion. <laughs> I'll, tell, well, I'll, tell you, <clears throat> I'll tell you what, with them, almost kind of auto-play games, right? Pokemon Quest needs very little actual playing. You know, you it does not actually have in. an auto-play function as well. It almost, it almost does. You, you log in and pick a level uh, and then they will kind of auto-play. So you're playing that click it first. Uh, but the reason why that got so much play is because it was just on in the back. I mean, so a good game to put on in the background. Uh, so it feels like you're kind of getting some gaming time in, but you don't actually have to pay much attention. I don't know. It's feeling a weird niche, right? Because it's previously, particularly at the moment, because everyone's working from home, rather than have something on TV on the background, I like to put a game on. Um, but, you know, if you put Smash on... You can't really follow Smash out the corner drive. Anyway, excuses, excuses, excuses. Blades has come out. I thought I'll give that a shot. Uh, but before we go there, I've just um, never touched the Elder Scrolls series. But you, you know of it, and you've seen some like yes, I know of it. I used to follow. Like, yeah. um, the oh, God, like NPC good... guy, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, oh, was it, was it something like Living in Morrowind? Living in Oblivion? Living in Oblivion, the webcomic. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. Uh, obviously, you know, get exposed to all the Bethesda silliness that happens in the glitch videos and stuff like that. Uh, I own Skyrim, and I think I've started it about four different times, but kind of never get past that starting town. Why is that? that Sorry, why is that, Varley? Why? <laughs> Why? Why can't you I just pass can't, that first time? I just cannot help myself when there's, when there's trouble to be caused or Robin to be done, and yeah, within a short space of time, it ends up with me being hounded out of town because I was caught stealing or I killed a dog or something. Um, Hold it right there, criminal scum! <laughs> exactly. I mean, the last time I played it, I got a little bit further. Uh, I got all the way up to uh, past that first fishy village, and then there's a uh, oh, the cave for the golden some... claw. Uh, there's some kind of mercenary type tower thing where you join some mercenaries. I got that far. All right. Yeah. Okay. Here. Yeah, I think that's in the other direction. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm familiar with the conventions. Love the idea, love the setting, the music, the different races, um, but never actually put much time into an Elder Scrolls game. So I thought potentially this is perfect for me. And the way Blade is set up is, um, it is of course, all the traps of free to play. So there are three currencies. There's a gems currency. Uh, there's a coins currency. So your coins kind of buys your gear and equipment. Your gems make speeds things up, and it starts with uh, you going to this city, which you uh, get to name. Uh, and when you get there, it's initially all destroyed. And you can, uh, by collecting shitloads of crafting material, start building buildings, build up your town reputation. As your town levels up, you can build workshops and alchemists. Uh, and then you kind of progress through a uh, story. It's first person um, and really simply, uh, and now that you explained there's a mobile phone heritage, it makes a lot of sense. Really simply, you just use your shoulder buttons to kind of do combos. Um, so you hold L2 uh, like a circular, uh, expanding circle fills up. Uh, and if you release at the right time, you do a critical hit. And then if you do R2, you get a combo. So you just do L2, R2, L2, R2. You get little quests. Uh, you pick up gear, items. Uh, so, yeah. And, it, and it's uh, really in your face about microtransactions. So unlike other games where perhaps the microtransaction stuff is hidden or a little menu, free, every now and then it will pop up with, do you want to buy this? Um <laughs> kind of in between missions um which is pretty on the nose uh and i've put a few hours into it and i've not yet hit a point where it's like okay i've you know i'm gonna have to just keep doing 
three days of missions in order to build a church. You know, things are kind of going and you get an exciting ping every morning when you log in. So that these three buildings are ready and here's another free gift. Uh, so yeah, enjoying it. Not quite hit the free to play wall where, you know, you have to splash a little in order to get anywhere. Um, don't know how much longer I'll stick with it, uh, but I am liking a bit of fantasy dungeon exploration. Uh, the one problem I have with it, which is probably why I'm going to give it up sooner than later, is it doesn't perform very well at all. <laughs> okay. On the Switch. So sometimes you can't turn right, or if you turn right, the game grinds almost to a halt. <laughs> really? Yeah. So I either end up. Um, Turning left <laughs> all the time, <laughs> uh, but you see, yeah, you really have to kind of fight the games, and, uh, fight the game in some sections, um, which is kind of jarring for something. You know, this should be a quick oh, jump wow. in, do this dungeon, hit this thing, hit this thing, hit this thing. I've just um, had a, a, a sound... little look at the scores for it, and it's like three out of ten. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another issue, the sound is really bad. So sometimes you'll come across like a little boss. Um, and then when you kind of enter the fight for the boss, uh, sometimes the boss music comes on a little bit too late. Um, like four times louder than anything else. <laughs> so it's really, really <laughs> loud. And then sometimes it just never goes away. So you just have to play the rest. You know, you beat the boss in a second. <laughs> And then you have to play the rest of the level with this uh, <laughs> hyper loud, you know, uh, kind of blasting out your um, headphones or TV levels <laughs> of volume. <laughs> the rest of the level. Oh dear. Uh, there's been one hard crash to the title screen as well. So yeah, it's um, considering it was working on mobiles, it's not a great like, port. Okay. Um, and then looking at the community side of things. Uh, so there's a guild mechanic um, where you can join different guilds. Um, and already it seems like people are giving up on it. It was quite quiet when I was looking the other day. Or difficult to find a guild to join. Uh, mm. And a couple of guilds which are called, you know, uh, an actually active guild, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like... <laughs> Just before you you rate it and all that sort of stuff, um, I just want to give my experiences. Like, because obviously, well, eh, avid readers of the blog will know that I am somewhat of a uh, uh, Elder Scrolls fanatic. In in the later generations, I hated Morrowind. Like, I, I played Morrowind. Uh, it was hard to control. Everyone looked stupid. I know that people are probably raging at the fact that I would say that, but um, I played Oblivion to death on the um, on the 360, um, and in fact, there's like some blog posts that I did which were just solely about me getting to get all the achievements in the shorter space of time possible. Now I did that, but it was not in the shorter space of time. Because like the achievements in it were actually quite cool. Go to this place, do all the, the tasks there. Go to this place, do all the tasks there. Uh, and you run through it. Um, and Skyrim, um, I also played that one to death as well. It's pretty much the same character. But um, and uh, yeah, like thoroughly enjoyed it. Like part of what I like about those games is the sneaking about. And I always do bow and arrows, so it's always sneaking about, poison, and then just shoot them. And the, the most fun part of a game is like somebody could just be having a conversation beside a fire in a dungeon, like a couple of mercenaries, bandits, whatever you are. And then you'll just like shoot one as they're talking to the other one. They'll look around and then they'll go, hmm, it must have been the wind. <laughs> as they're, <laughs> as they're, you know. Fallen compatriot is just like dead on the ground with an arrow in his head. <laughs> uh, but that's the, I mean, that's the, I think that's what's quite fun about it is like 
if you level up your skills beyond the maximum, you break the game. And breaking the game in that sort of fashion is fun. You forgive that it doesn't work in the real world. It's just a good, fun game to run through. And, like, Skyrim's huge, it's massive. Oblivion is huge and massive as well. You know, it's just, it allows you a, a, a big, big sandbox to play about with. And, of course, it's dragons and knights and shit and centaurs and all that sort of stuff. It's good fun. Um, I played Blades probably solidly for about a week um, on the mobile phone. I was excited about it. Um, uh-huh. but I very, very quickly gave up on it, and I, it was, it was like an informed thing, it was like, right, okay, going back and do these dungeons, it's fun to see some of the goblins and things like that from the game, however, I was not in any way interested in the character that I even, did you even get a creator? I can't even remember if you got a creator. Uh, I don't know how much they've changed it from the mobile version, but yeah, you you get you, you get quite a comprehensive. Um, yeah, so they've lifted the creator you know, probably from Skyrim. Yeah, yeah, it's not quite as mental in terms of the number of options and things, but there's yeah. a lot to do. Yeah, there's not not you know there's probably less options for kind of pies and stuff like that, but you can yeah you can definitely. Uh, but you know, yeah, I didn't imagine it'd be that different for any any of the races or how you sort of play the game either it's um it was run through the dungeon if you're lucky there will be some chests and then i got to the town and then i started building a few things and then i worked out what the currencies were and i was just like right so i need to grind this and then build a house okay that's fine oh the house has 10 levels of upgrades and then you can see <clears throat> you're not going to get like level 10 upgrade materials unless you pay money or you're part of some guild. And it's like, oh, I'm done. I don't need this. It looks like Skyrim. It's not going to offer me anything beyond um, what the, the actual game was. So I just thought, I'm done. I will wait for Elder Scrolls 6, whenever and whatever that may be. And I will wait a good two or three months until after they finished all the initial <laughs> bug fixes for the release version. <laughs> um, yeah, I, so that's the um, that's the thought process going on in my in my head almost every time I'm playing it. Why am I playing this clearly broken, little bit scuzzy free to play game when I have Skyrim just sat there? But it's yeah. the it's uh, it's hard to describe the psychology of it, but it's. Uh, well, this is just throw away, right? I can delete this off my Switch, no problem. Whereas, actual investment in Skyrim is a commitment. Even even now, where many do you have? A, kind of... Sorry, do you have um, Skyrim on the Switch or the PS4? PS3. PS3. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because <clears throat> of all the versions, I think the Switch is probably the most fun one. Like. If I was to go back and play Skyrim, I'd probably do it on the Switch. Purely because it has the flailing about um, abilities of the Joy-Cons. So you can attack the Yeah, so that's... <clears throat> I've not played um, using the Joy-Cons with Blades. But there is a motion control option there as well. Yeah, cool. Um, but the, the, to me, you know, <laughs> when we knew that lockdown was coming, and I, I was... Skyrim, was like, oh, maybe is now the time to, you know, really give Skyrim a good crack. But then that would just be, you know, easily that would fill the entirety of my free time, just one game. Um, and so yeah, that's but... too intimidating. I... And then okay. Blades is so ephemeral and trashy that I'm actually, you know, I, again, this is, I know there's no really rationalization or no squaring the circle of my mental psychology when it comes to approaching these games but that's that's my thought process at the moment is every time I'm playing blades i'm gutted like you should just be playing skyrim skyrim never... i mean i'm gonna say one thing with skyrim is i did play it as a pick up and play game for a long time and uh-huh. purely because of the wonder 
that you don't see in that many games, well, you see in a few games, is the save is just then and there. You don't need to go out to outside of the dungeon. You don't need to find a save spot or anything like that. You press pause, you save, and then you come back whenever. Uh, the only downside to that is if you decide that you're going to save in the middle of a massive dungeon, <laughs> I will tell you this. In Skyrim, there's a dungeon I literally spent around 20 hours alone in. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, you're just like wandering about thinking, shit, I'm, I can't, I'm, I'm overburdened. <laughs> you know, it's like, what yeah, are you going to ditch? There's a lot, you know, there was a lot of that. It's crawling about, filled with gear to try and make a little bit extra money. <clears throat> um, and then also... Uh, the bit where I was on, there's some kind of vampire witchy thing up in the mountains, and I was, you know, just a couple of levels too short to be able to do it easily, and so I just kept oh, throwing myself at this. Are you playing? That would be the expansion then. That's yeah. You're not really supposed to jump in at level one on that one. Um, I don't. I, my it's frozen. There's a tree. Yeah, I it's think that mountains. sounds like Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's quite near the starting village, and I just kept running up the mountain um, and trying to do this. Oh thing. wait, a minute. yeah, no, I know who you're talking about actually. Yeah, little cabin. really early. It's really early. Yeah, on, yeah, yeah. All of this is. She's really actually got one of the the glitchy things in the in the the 360 version or probably PS3 version. It's like you want to kill her. And then you go into her basement and you find out all of her witchy stuff. But she, if you leave any stuff in her drawers, it will be there permanently. It's like one of the few spots in the games where you can happily leave things and they won't disappear for whatever <laughs> reason. Um, I know. I think I think I've done I've done her. Um, it's yeah. It's much more. Anyway, this is ridiculous. Vague recollections of playing Skyrim a couple of months ago. Ach, I mean, um, like, I, as I said, Skyrim, I think, is is a well worth uh, a, a go game. And there's just so I much know. to do in it. But, yeah. I know. It's also... Because you're saying there's so much to do in it, I'm not going to do it. Just save. And, and like, I, I, I'm not going to do all of it. You know, I, I certainly wouldn't do all of it. I hated all the mage shit. So I, I spent very little time with the mages. Except to get achievements. <laughs> You know, what like are you, you playing? Can... All right, fine. Fuck it. I'm, I'm that ending, was... I'm, that... I'm that ending was... this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> fucking passive. What are you playing? Because, if you want to talk more about Elder Scrolls, then start playing in Elder Scrolls, and it will come up on your what are you playing. So that's all it. right. All right, fine. <laughs> fucking playing it <laughs> as soon as I get off this call. Um, right. Uh, sorry, just before we go, what's your score for Blades? <laughs> Blades, uh, three, uh, three or four. It's down there. If it, okay. If it performed better, then it would be a five. You know, um, it's free. Delete the, the get... fuck out of it. <laughs> well, I've got I that guarantee space on the you. <laughs> I guarantee you'll prefer the free space. On your average-sized SD card, <laughs> or above Larger average, sorry. Than average <laughs> SD card, not mega okay. huge, <laughs> not wincing huge SD card. <laughs> wincing? Oh, that's a horrible, horrible image. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Okay. What have I been playing? Yeah. Well, uh, I have. I've been, been playing Morrowind. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing uh, Skyrim uh, remastered <laughs> edition. <laughs> um, I I spoke briefly about uh, all of the free shit that you get on uh, Epic Store at the moment. So they're yes. giving away free games and free games, free games, and I'm I'm just I'm dabbling with them now. So I found uh, a game that I done. Uh, that had come for free called Death Coming. Uh huh. Um, so yeah, I have been playing Death Coming, and 
it is not what you think it is. It's not about <laughs> the Grim Reaper jizzing. Um, okay. <laughs> in my in my mind, it's specifically the Grim Reaper from um, Bill and Ted. <laughs> William Sadler. <laughs> <laughs> I've been Melvin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just, don't, don't know why just, he suddenly became Arnie as well. <laughs> Get to the chopper. Um, so, yeah, so what do you do if you're not just ejaculating into the Grim Reaper? Um, or, or, let's not, you know, genderize death if you're rubbing herself off. If, if death isn't rubbing herself off. Um, it could be either. Yeah, absolutely. Let's. Uh, or both. Yeah, or or neither. Yeah, because we accept all kinds of deaths here at the TGA Empowered. Yeah, and uh, and even though the anthropomorphized version, anthropomorphized version, <laughs> anthropomorphized, <laughs> anthropomorphized, uh... <laughs> anthropomorphized. I'm so glad I decided to do a podcast because you know my ability to say words is like solid, man. Like, uh, uh, my elocution. So you're glad, yeah. You're glad you've not had the most death. And the most. Uh, <laughs> I was going to go off on a speech about how an anthropomorphized death doesn't actually exist. You know, it's bullshit. Right. Move on. <laughs> so, the game. What is this game? I've never heard of this game. What is it? Uh, it's. Well, it's, it's a sort of pixel game um it's a 3d well not 3d um an isometric uh, map <laughs> of yeah. pixels and it's sort of like the sims and that there's people moving about um but what your goal is is as the grim reaper's assistant is to kill people off so oh, nice yeah, so basically there's clickable objects in there that you can, at the right time, kill people off or set set up traps and, and that sort of thing. Um, and it's a high score sort of based thing, but it's actually just yeah. fun because there's usually like persons of interest that you have to kill and then you have to get a kill count and then you move on to the next level. So far, I've done one level, which was... Uh, sort of a house which is a tutorial level the next level was um a secret spy facility um in korea or something like that and uh so they're like prepping a missile um <laughs> and creating a missile and you've got like the leader of it and you have to try and like you create scandal because like you find out that the leader's um girlfriend is actually sleeping with another uh, of the security guard, so you create that sort of narrative to happen so that he finds yeah. them and then kill them. Um, and then the last level I did, which you'll actually be interested in, is a museum. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, so it's got like the typical exhibits of ancient Egypt and a dinosaur one, and for some reason a Dracula one. Don't question it too far. <laughs> There's a cat okay, being a yeah. gift shop. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, so like, it's it, it's getting bigger and bigger, and that that last one took me a good hour just to sort of find all of the traps and actually kill people in the right order. And you can fuck it up. That's the thing. It's like, if you click something, that trap's gone. And if you manage to miss that person, i.e., the person moves on or um, they, they just walk out of the area of the trap there's you're not going to be able to use that trap again there's a good chance that person's just going to survive so you fucked it up and if that happens to be one of the vips you're just going to have to restart the level um but when you do restart the level you know where things are you set off things in the right uh, time and then you can actually sort of play through it much much faster but uh yeah um aesthetically it's all pixels uh, and it's this isometric uh, view, like, like. <clears throat> so like in my mind, it's it's like a theme hospital syndicate. Yeah. Exactly like yeah. that, uh, or yeah. Sims One, 
you know yeah okay, where it yeah. was actually pixely um i i and it's sort of like that meets death trap dungeon uh and it's got that light humor um uh -huh. and it's fudge you mean death trap dungeon do i mean death trap dungeon what's the one where death you Death Trap Dungeon is like the third person, brutally hard. Okay, it's um, definitely not that one. Uh, it's the, the one where you, you actually... Dungeon Master? Dungeon Keeper? Dungeon Keeper, yes. Yes. So it's okay. kind of like that. It's kind of like um, uh, Dungeon Keeper meets Sims. Um, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and it sounds it... like uh, it has kind of... Uh, some of the mechanics from one of your what was that ghost game that you love exactly like Ghostmaster as well <laughs> i love Ghostmaster so much like I, I can happily go back and play that game whenever um and yeah it, it does have those kind of mechanics and it it's tongue-in-cheek fun like um there's, there's lots of nods it's got some like adult jokes in there as well like the, the whole fact that you're working in north korea creating a missile um <laughs> and like the you know the, the, there's fun things like uh the museum owner he would flick through some channels and if you click at the right time he's like oh, shit and he's like been looking at porn you know <laughs> sort of sort of <laughs> thing and, and that sort of stuff it, it's good fun um and I, I like the idea behind it um that being said Playing oh. it on a PC, um, mm -hmm. it feels like it was meant for mobile. Oh, really? Did it yeah. ever come out on mobile? No. I had a hunt for it. And I, it, like, it came out, what, two years ago or something. Um, and I feel like that, that game was in development for mobile. And... Something happened. Probably the studio just decided that shit, we need something to get out, and, and it went out. And probably the studio doesn't even exist anymore. But I, that, that's I don't know. Um, that is here and there, here or there. But what I'm saying is like I strongly feel that this was meant for mobile, but maybe they couldn't get something quite right with it because there is a lot of zooming in and out. But essentially, mm -hmm. all you do is left click and scroll. And, and that's it really um and i feel like that should just have been touch screen controls more than anything um so it feels shallow to play does if, if that makes sense you know yeah like, how much when you were describing it how much do you have to play the level once or twice to kind of okay that's what that does, that's what that does, that's what that does, and then kind of give it a honest crack when you know how all the traps work and what does what. Um, I think, I mean, I, I spent an hour, like, just, like, clicking about in that museum, setting off things, making things happen, because there's, like, there's all little tiny arcs to make happen as well. Like, there was three thieves... Um, just sort of kicking about in the museum and they count to your kill count but there's no way you can catch them because they're sprinting around the only thing that slows them down is if you find the thing that they want to steal and usually that's hidden behind someone else having to die you know so you find these little ways to allow them to be slowed down and this is a very very broad example um, you slow down the thieves so you can add them to your kill count and you can spend one playthrough almost just working that out and like right okay now i know how to do that i'll go back and i'll do a quick run through kill everyone as fast as possible get the thieves done as well then do this so that you can just get everybody in one go and uh, I, I would say that like just on one level you could spend a couple of hours alone on that but yeah i suppose now that I'm saying this out loud, and now that you question that, as a mobile game, one, I don't see any way to monetize it. <laughs> like there is no, there is no, uh, no way to put in gems or energy mechanics or <laughs> stuff like that. And two, 
where do you pause it? I suppose that's that's a big thing. I kind of think that this it's a premium mobile game, but you have to play it like a PC version. I, I think, okay, I, I feel more at home with it now. That being said, it okay. still feels quite shallow. Um, I, I feel like could have had more depth to it, but does it need bigger production values? I don't know. Because um, you spent quite a lot of time with it for just the, you know one or two levels. It, it's because there's so much to find. Um, well, then, and, how can you say it's shallow? I, as in, or, like, does, or does, or is it more of a shallow feel to it? Shallow feel to it. It feels paper. Okay. Uh, papery. Uh, but on top of that, it's like they give you a little button in the bottom corner, which has silhouettes of all of the traps. So that then just becomes find the silhouette of the thing, and then wait for somebody to go underneath it and die or whatever. So you okay. you you, you, you kind of do it on that level but yeah i suppose that's um i don't know i am i'm having fun with it because of the it's quite chilled like there there's no real heat is on people still wander about yeah you can fuck up but you just restart um there's no i, I guess there's no skill involved really <laughs> Unless you're playing at like a high, high level, so it's just kind of uh, find the things, click on them at the right time, and, and yeah, and sometimes yeah. yeah, sometimes you're just in the mood for that. You know, I want to play something, but I don't, you know, don't want to have to use my exactly. reflexes or yeah, or, or or too much brain power either. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, it's been quite nice, quite chilled. Um. I I I mean, I just took a punt on it because like obviously. Of the 400 odd games that I have, <laughs> and this recent one that I just got free from the Epic Store, I thought, oh, it looks interesting. Um, give it a go, and uh, yeah, it's pleasant, chilled, nice. I wouldn't not recommend it if, <laughs> <laughs> if you understand my uh, words. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so given, <laughs> given that this isn't GTA 5 the current free game. Oh my god, that's a fucking different story, man. That came out on Thursday night, um, and yes, they gave away GTA 5 for free, uh, but it was a fucking nightmare. Now, speaking of space, um, the game is 80 gigs. Nowhere oh, okay. on the fucking Epic Store does it actually state how big it is or how big the download is. When you click download, all you see is a green bar which says 1%, and you have no concept of how long that will take. <laughs> now, I had it downloading for 8 hours, and I don't have a particularly slow internet connection. I had it downloading <laughs> for 8 hours, it got to 75%, um, I was doing something, and I thought, I'll just do a restart, and I can pick it back up. Incidentally, after restarting my computer, the fucking thing had to start again from zero. So, I mean, that was terrible, like, just awful. Um, but yeah, I, I got uh, GTA V and I got it downloaded. Um, I know I played that in the 360, um, and I enjoyed it. And I, I got it for the PC, thinking, you know what, I might, I might have another go at it again. You know, because I've forgotten yeah. the storyline. I had fun. Yeah. Uh, it started up and then it was like that scene in the snow mountains ah oh, fuck it's ages before you're actually allowed to play the fucking game <laughs> so i was just gonna write well, another time maybe um <laughs> i know that another time i know that uh, gta 5 like the, the biggest part of it nowadays is actually the uh online and the multiplayer and all that sort of stuff and the story's kind of second fiddle um but yeah, I mean that was cool when it came out. Um, but yeah, the the troubles I had just getting it from the Epic Store, absolutely nuts. Um, and again, I blame Epic, the blame Rockstar. Um, it it just killed the Epic Store. The download was far too slow, and there was no communication. And also, it was bugged. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah they're still. 
getting their store sorted out, I guess. Yeah, well, at least it's no longer just a browser. Um, yeah, but, at least, yeah. Does, does it have a basket yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. oh, actually, maybe That's not. Good. No, I think you choose the game and you just click uh, get. Um, it doesn't have, like, uh, you don't have 20 games that you can do and just buy in one go. We're not. No. I don't even think that's particularly necessary for normal human beings. You know what I mean? Fair enough. We don't make our careers from buying 20 games from the Epic Store at a time. You know? I'm yeah. quite happy to buy one at a time. <laughs> so, yeah, not or fussed none. about that. Or none. Just getting free, free well, downloads. That being said, um, the free versions of all of these games, you still need to go through the store process. It's just you go through it, you don't pay any money, but you still have to buy it for free and add it to your account. You get a receipt and all that sort of stuff. It's fine. I'm not going to complain too much about that at all. So, yeah. Free games are uh, almost a theme for this week's podcast. Oh, shit, almost. Um, if only I hadn't talked about Streets of Rage 4. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, yeah. How much was Streets of Rage for, by the way? Uh, oh, God. I think 25 quid. Okay. I got it on PC. Uh, yeah. Not on uh, Switch. Um, yeah. So it's I, 50, I, I d- 54 I, pounds on the Switch. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not. An, it's definitely not a premium game in that sort of fashion, but it, it feels like a blockbuster release. And then I just straight up bought it, and it was a. Uh, I didn't even really think about the price, I just knew that I wanted that game, so I suppose it delivered in every way again, but, I mean, your expectations can't be much higher for these um, these kind of scrolling beat-em-ups. Um, yeah, I really wish, I, I've been sitting on my laptop this entire time, I wish I'd fucking looked up the name of that French game. <laughs> I mean, it's not even hard i got, like, the Steam app as well. I can look at all of yeah. my going purchases. Probably got it. Just search for your yeah. side-scrolling beat map. Yeah. Actually, actually, that is another thing that um, on uh, Steam that kills me is those side-scrolling beat-em-ups don't get a tag of side-scrolling beat-em-up. They get a tag, and this kills me a lot, of fighting game. Oh, don't, don't. I mean, with all kind of genre descriptions, it, it starts to fall. Particularly, particularly when it comes to man-made artificial things. Yeah, it's fine when you've got a few. But when you have too many, it just gets insane. Right. So when so in the early days of gaming, you could nicely kind of categorize everything. Um, but now it's yeah. How do you how do you even do it? You you can't just have a strict kind of um, it, it, games just don't fit into one genre anymore. You have to have a cloud of kind of tags almost. Um, yeah. And I, I can completely understand why they would be under the fighting games tag because historically those two things are very close. You know, it's just but why not have the same a tag? thing going on? But why not Same have a tag going on. side scrolling beat em up, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, I actually. Mean. Yeah, yeah. I haven't looked at the tags a lot recently. I know that they've done some updates on Steam. But I remember, because I was in, in the mood for playing a lot of these sort of side scrolling beat em ups, and it was just a pain in the tits to have to scroll through, I don't know, Skull Calibur and all of these other fighting <laughs> games. And you're just like, all right, yeah. These are fighting games, but I want to be able to see that specific type of genre. Like, I I, I don't know. I mean, they should have things like Metroidvania as a thing, because there is plenty of them. Um, And they should have side-scroll and beat-em-up. Incidentally, it's called Streets of Fury EX. Streets of Fury. Is that the French game? That's the French game where they've actually mo-capped human beings. Uh, That's right, and there's a whole bunch of a hilarious cast of characters, including yeah, it's basically a all of the producers man of the and game. a guy in a jacket, and yeah. 
yeah a guy in a jacket hilarious um <laughs> but yeah it, it's actually it's a fun game to play through and it's um it, it's it's paper thin fucking plot as always but because it's all uh sort of captured similar to like how they did mortal kombat you know the first mortal kombat those side captures of them yeah <laughs> it's, it's it's good fun um, and they give them special powers that they're like a guy with a giant flaming axe which is you know, obviously just pixelated <laughs> but um, well animated in there yeah, that, that was fun uh, but yeah where are we at? are we done? Uh, what would you give Death's Coming? Uh, I'd give it a solid 6.5 out of 10 6.5? Yeah, I mean it's. I, I I don't feel a huge desire to like say yeah this is amazing this is great but it is fun and chilled and nice. It, uh, it's, it's scratch an itch. Yeah, scratch yeah, uh, yeah it's scratch an itch. I think that's the best way to put it. Good scratch call. the genre itch. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cool. Do you want to... I think... Well, let's call it there. Um, let's put it there. Yeah. Find us on thatguys.co.uk. Like, uh, subscribe, bell, yeah. follow, yeah. hug, smiley, sad smiley face, happy smiley face. Death jizz. Vomit. Vomit smiley <laughs> face. Eggplant. Beach. Eggplant. <laughs> Hashtag. Lips. lips. <laughs> Hashtag lips lips. Um, Hashtag lips lips. Yeah. Uh, we've uh, also <laughs> we've also got some content coming out on the blog. Uh, today you wrote about lockdown games. I did, but this is friends. three weeks in the future. Oh uh, well, that's probably still going to be our last post, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I feel like there's still one that's very much pending that I've already there done is... my bit for. <laughs> <laughs> All I have to do is sit down and write it. Because <laughs> uh, instead I'm trying to breed a shiny whopper fit. Well, you know, priorities. Uh, well, you yeah, know, it's not like I've had 30 years to do this, so... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> well, to, to be fair, it only got a lot easier recently. <laughs> right. Okay, go. Cool. Uh, bye. Bye. Thanks. No, bye. bye. Have fun.